Welcome to the Legends Behind the Craft podcast, where we feature top leaders in the wine and craft beverage industry with your host, Drew Hendricks. Now, let's get started with the show. Drew Thomas Hendricks here. I'm the host of the Legends Behind the Craft podcast, where I talk with leaders in the wine and craft beverage industry. Past guests of Legends Behind the Craft include Lawrence Francis of Interpreting Wine, Cheryl Dursey of LibDib, Zach Campus of Commerce 7. If you haven't listened to any of these yet, be sure to check them out and subscribe. Today's episode, it's sponsored by Barrels Ahead. Barrels Ahead, we work with you to implement a one-of-a-kind marketing strategy, one that highlights your authenticity, tells your story, and connects you with your ideal customers. In short, we help wineries and craft beverage producers unlock their story to unleash their revenue. Go to BarrelsAhead.com today to learn more. Speaking of Barrels Ahead, today I've got Bianca Harmon on the show, who's one of our direct consumer marketing strategists. How's it going, Bet Bianca? It's going good. Excited to talk with Paul today and really learn more about PICS. Yes, yes. Today's guest is Paul Mabry, CEO of PICS. Paul's considered to be one of the wine industry's foremost futurists and thought leaders. Now, Paul was on the show early last summer when we talked about the upcoming launch of PICS. And I'm excited to catch up with him today to learn about the latest, actually the latest about the platform now that it's out in the wild. Welcome to the show, Paul. Uh, thanks for having me, my friend. It's good to be here and uh, see you guys. And soon we have to have uh, a drink in person now that the, the pandemic is kind of going away, right? Yes, so, absolutely. Now, you, yeah. you, the pandemic's gone away and you just got back from, from what I see on social, an amazing trip to South Africa. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of the country. Uh, it's a long trip, by the way. Uh, I was right. a keynote speaker uh, for a conference that's been delayed by two and a half years. So it was kind of a long overdue, um, you know, talking about enotourism and talking about DTC, actually, Bianca. And, right. you know, part of the, the story was, God, it's a long ways to get to South Africa. Yes. So when you get somebody here, you better really make you take care of them. And they, and they do a great job. <laughs> I've tried to plan a couple surf trips there logistically from the West Coast. It's a it's a commitment. It's a commitment. It's 30 hours total travel, you know, not counting airports and car rides and stuff like that. So it was a long, long trip. I have a lot of friends long. that go out there, though. I mean, I have a girlfriend, too. She grew up in South Africa. And so they do it, they do it twice a year and they've never, I've never really, I did never know it was actually that long of a trip. It's so amazing. Like it's, nothing. it's so beautiful. It's so amazing that, you know, it's, it's one of the, the, the most amazing wine countries. The Milky Way is beautiful. It's like someone mm. painted the sky in the center and the mountains shoot up and it's just a gorgeous country with gorgeous people with gorgeous wine. And what, yeah. What's that picture I saw you swimming with sharks? Yeah, so I, this, I haven't been back to South Africa for 21 years. It was 21 years ago I went and came. And the last time I was there, they're like, hey, you want to go great white shark diving? And I was like, oh, I do, but mm, I, you know. And I didn't do it. And I regretted it for 21 years. So I was down there and I, I, I texted my wife. I said, I'm going shark diving. And she goes, you're kidding. And I'm like, no, I'm going shark diving. Great white shark diving. And so I sent her a picture and I did. I went great white shark diving. Unfortunately, the great whites are hiding right now because I don't know, it was about three, maybe four years ago, two orcas moved into the neighborhood and oh. are hunting the sharks and they eat the great whites. So the great whites are hiding. And sometimes oh. you get them and sometimes you don't. But we had big copper sharks, which was oh, okay. pretty cool. And it was amazing. And the one thing they don't tell you, and I'll share this for when you go, if it's on your bucket list, is what you don't think of, and it's cool, the sharks are there, you're in a cage, it's, you know, eight people and the teeth, and it's uh -huh. in your, your, but you forget that they are pouring chum over the top of your head. <laughs> to get this, so it's this fish oil gunk. Oh, yeah, geez. Just, uh, yeah. I didn't even think about that. I mean, I, I see them out in the wild, I see them being peaceful, but I guess you're, they like create a feeding frenzy above your head. Well, they want to they want to bring them there and yeah. get them ready to eat, and then they want to you know see the mouth open and everything. So it's pretty, but it, it was worth it. It was amazing. That is that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That, that's pretty amazing. I've seen a few out in the wild, but none none in a cage, <laughs> and thankfully nothing that close. <laughs> yeah, it was close. I mean, there was one that got its head through the 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 cage, but because he couldn't open his mouth, it was like. That <gasps> <laughs> yeah, was cool. It was oh, scary. That sounds fantastic. <laughs> it was good. Sounds great. So South Africa was a success. South Africa was an amazing success. It's great to hear um, 
uh, you know, the stories. And it's, it's so wonderful to go to another country and see the amount of wine that we don't see in the United States. You know, the quantity of really boutique, interesting stuff around the world. And this also was reassuring for us, you know, our story is to help wines be discovered and to help wineries, you know, help consumers find their wines. And that's really Pix's job, right? Discover the wines, discover ways to buy the wines, discover the wines to buy. And it was really heartfelt and warm uh, to have these wines say, we're so thankful for you because now we can tell consumers in America to go to Pix and they can find my South African Chenin Blanc. Because I can't tell them where to go otherwise because I don't know where I'm at. And yeah, I was like, it was very heartwarming for us to have that story arc. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, so the idea though, so for the people that are new that may not be familiar with the platform, tell us a little bit about PIX. Um, yeah, PIX is the world's first and largest wine discovery platform. We are the second largest selection of wine in the world. Um, soon to be the first by the end of the summer. That means we have the most wines on our platform. We uh, launched on January 12th um, and it, yeah, no, it's a year and two months since we, you know, which is record time. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have over 5,000 wine sellers of wineries, retailers on the platform and we grow by 50 a week. So we are at an explosive growth on that one. And it's everyone from Constellation to Opus One. It's everyone from Mathiasen to um, McCann Cellars. It's uh, you know, Sokolon to Total Wine, it's backroom wines to, you know, Zaki's. It's it's the whole spectrum. Um, and our job is really simple. Our job is to help consumers discover wine. And discover means discover the wine I'm looking for through a search engine, um, sure. discover ways to buy the wine, which is uniquely us. Like, do I want to buy it local? Do I want to buy it fast? Do I want to buy it directly from the producer? We want to help them have the choice and then discover other wines to buy. And that discovery lens is what really has made us special. Mm -hmm. Um, And if you see on our site, um, unlike other platforms, we are slicing and dicing, curating the world's wine in a million different ways, whether it's wines with dogs on the label or volcanic wines over $100 or wines for masters of wine under 100 cases. I mean, I don't care. My job is to make it so that I can be signposted so you can find the wines. Well, that's fine. I like the the discovery lens. That's a great word because you've always you've always been very candid about being the the Google of um, yeah. wine search. Yeah, and a lot of Google search is why it's so successful is based on intent. That's right. But sometimes you may want the cheapest version of the wine. Sometimes it's just the closest one or the quickest the one that you can have access to because you need that wine tonight, or you're trying to send it to someone. Yeah, and we purposely chose even though we get that moniker the Google for wine. You know, I've, I've been in the wine industry a very long time. I've been in the tech industry. You know, Google is one of the most amazing tools in mm-hmm. human history. Mm-hmm. And do, Google is great for finding anything you're looking for. It's just, it's amazing for that. Mm-hmm. But what Google what's Google not good for? Finding what you're not looking for. Or, oh. find, or if you don't know what you're looking for, helping okay. you find it, right? Uh-huh. Um, and that's why discovery needs to be part of that equation, especially in a, an industry like wine. Um, you know, how can I help introduce you or show you or guide you Maybe you think you want Cabernet. That's a big term. I, you mm-hmm. search on our site right now, Cabernet Sauvignon. I think you have 59,000 offers. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a pretty, you're lost. You can't do, how many days would it take to go through 59,000? Me, if you sort and slice and dice and go best price, highest rated, mm-hmm. it still gets you down to thousands. How do I make it smaller and easier for you to decide, oh, I like Cabernet is under $20 to impress my wife or you know, Cabernet is to share with my boss. Mm-hmm. Cabernet is directly from the wine. Yeah, find what you're not looking. I love that. That's that's very that's good. So that's with the I see that you have got some curated, like kind of curated selections there. Yeah, the, the, those collections are really important for us, and the collections are they're, they're they're all through the site. You're going to see them exploding. And actually, we take all of our learnings not from the wine industry, uh, which is a really interesting. We look at the big companies that mm-hmm. service super long tail products, mm-hmm. right? And super long tail products. There's only Four real categories of super long tail products and wine is the only consumer good. So super long tail products include books, oh. music, movies. There's millions of types of books and music, uh-huh. you know, Bollywood and or hundreds of thousands at least, right? You mm-hmm. know, that piece, you know, and how do they slice and dice and make it easier for a consumer who's going to go to audible.com and figure out an audible book right? how yeah, they or, or on a Netflix where you've got Netflix, all right? the different, you don't even know the new shows. It's so much to sort through. So we take our learning and our leads from people from those companies and mm-hmm. apply it to wine. So for example, collections are a great example of that. Mm-hmm. You know, if you go to audible.com, they make it smaller, right? Mm-hmm. They say, okay, uh, science fiction, but even that's too big. Science fiction with zombies, science fiction with zombies by BIPOC authors. Okay. 
now that's big enough for me to get, figure yeah. out where I want to go, right? Um, uh, and then we have the tags that are on the wines. And we took that from uh, Netflix. If you hmm. hover over a Netflix movie, it'll tell you three things about the movie. It'll tell you rom-com, sci-fi adventure, documentary, dark, gritty comedy, you know, all of that. We do the same thing. We're trying to help convert a, um, a shopper to a buyer. And we want to give them quick signals so that they get interested and if not, they can move on quickly because we don't have a lot of time. That's the only finite resource in the human condition. Mm -hmm. Yep, we all have, we all have the same time. It kind of seems like some people have more, but yeah. I know that's <laughs> not me, obviously. <laughs> okay. yeah. yeah. So for wine stores, they you're doing all this work for them. They're they're putting the wines up there. You're kind of aggregating, and they fit into the platform. How just under that particular wine category? So we believe that um, the wine industry has been locked behind paywalls, the discovery has to be open and accessible mm -hmm. to everyone. So for a winery or a retailer, it's free to participate. You just have to give us a feed, you link to it. We want you to be discovered. And we actually show um, uh, based upon four factors from the producer, the lowest price, the nearest and the fastest. And what makes that very different is everybody has a chance to actually make a sale. Mm -hmm. If you look at all the other platforms in history prior to us, it was only about price. The lowest price, the second lowest price, the third lowest price, the fourth lowest price. So as you know, let's use Prashant um, uh, from Backroom Wines. Backroom Wines is a great local retailer here in Napa, an amazing selection of wine. They're never going to be the low price leader, mm. ever, ever, ever. Suddenly, mm. I, they are at the top of the search because they're nearest to me when I'm searching or nearest to Bianca. She might have find Gary's in St. Melina, which is mm -hmm. near her, Right. They're not always going to be the low price leader, right? Or the producer will never be in the search term on, on, on another company because they're never the lowest price. We give them all a swing at the plate and the consumer gets to make the choice. You know what? I, I do want it the cheapest. No, I don't want it the cheapest. I want to get in the car and drive and have it tonight for dinner. I don't want to wait a week and pay mm -hmm. shipping. Or you know what? I care about the producer. I like provenance. I really care about how that bottle has been aged and I want to buy it directly from the producer. We, or I forgot Drew's birthday. I know he loves this wine. I'm willing to pay a premium and a, way more money so he gets it today to make him happy because I'm I'm a, a absent-minded professor. Yes, that makes sense. That makes sense. So how um, I don't want to back up, but I also want to back up. Tell me about this launch. Like not, that was such a quick time frame from the concept yeah. to beta launch in Ju January. I was. Florida, yeah, right? yeah, Florida, yeah, yeah. You, dark circles under our eyes for sure. I mean, um, but you know, I, this has obviously been germinating for some time. Being a technical insider, I knew where a lot of the bodies were buried, how to make it go mm -hmm. faster. But um, you know, there's a lot of work still to be done. I mean, we'll have geo awareness goes live this week, so we can actually show the closest and the fastest okay. that's going live. So that's taken. Uh, <clears throat> you know, we don't have uh, we don't have content for this vintage specific yet because already we have you know, 5.5 million wines in mm -hmm. the database. Imagine spending a dollar per wine to put the content in. That would be like $5.5 million that goes in the garbage can, right? It's, it's a pretty ridiculous spend. So, yeah. but we love the job because the job is really helping uh, emulate uh, a, a human. And actually, if you look at us in our, our conversation, we believe the ultimate match is a combination between human and machine not mm -hmm. the other way around. You cannot replace that human layer of smartness. Machines are dumb for the most part. Mm -hmm. So, you know, our collections are human generated. The tags are WCT students plus, and they're teaching the machine how to tag. Mm -hmm. uh, our recommended wines are a WCT two students plus saying, I know this wine and it tastes like this because you can't break wine into pieces and put it back together again to get the flavor because every red wine has blackberry, cassis, and cherry, and every white wine has lemon, vanilla, and not, not everyone, but you know, <laughs> those qualities you can see yeah. a lot of wines. Um, it's I love that. And that human element is something that from the start, I, I mean, you have, you have an amazing um, content on the site yeah, and you've separated it to something called the drop, yeah, which was brilliant. And so some brilliant articles on there. What was the, I mean, that talk to me about the drop for a little bit. Yeah. So, you know, discovery is layers of different things. That's the key, right. And, and, and help me introduce you to wines uh, in different ways. So maybe it, maybe you're a budget buyer. Mm -hmm. Best wines under $20 is a, a key component to help you find your path. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're on a really interesting wine journey and there's different ways to do that. And content is one of those inspirational vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's also our way um, to help the understand how to empower other content 
creators, right? So the content we do is kind of our sandbox. The drop is mm-hmm. it's independently journalists. The only part of the company I don't manage, right? They write like a journalist community today, the separation of church and state. But when they write an article about wine, it leads back to pick. So we learn how to do that. And that's why we have the Robert Parker deal. Um, and that's what yeah, I was asking about that too. Perfect. Yes. So our job is to close the loop. That's my only job as a platform and to, is to help close the loop and help introduce new wines. And part of closing the loop is helping either a producer, an agency like yourself, or a content provider when they talk about a wine, when they advertise a wine, when they're trying to help the consumer find a wine, I bring it together. And um, the drop does that initially for us. And it does great articles to help inspire people through that discovery journal, but also helps us learn how I can go to a blogger, how I can talk to Frank Morgan writing articles, how I can do Joe Roberts one wine dude and say, hey, whenever you blog about this wine or Alder Yarrow who's on our board of advisors, link mm-hmm. to picks so we can help the consumer buy it after you made them. And because we're this ever filling perpetual store mm-hmm. that serves the customer, whether you're in St. Helena or in Baltimore, whether you're in Boston or in Austin, we, mm-hmm. we help. That's great. How, um, you mentioned agencies. How does, a, how does an agency like Barrels Ahead, how, when we work with wineries, and we're helping them with Facebook, we're helping them with Google, yeah. we're helping them with their whole online presence. How does the agency fit into your um, PIX model? Yeah, it's a great question. So a couple of things. First of all, as the discovery platform is making all these partnerships with bloggers and wine advocate, you want to make sure that they have their highest relevance and, mm-hmm. and best organic search or best availability to be found on PIX, right? That's mm-hmm. that's. So whether you are out there partnering with influencers to drive them to that the, the site, you know, or, or making sure that they're kind of got their content fill, is filled out completely or that we've made sure that they're tagged so that they, they rise higher in the search results. Mm-hmm. That's one piece that kind of organic, um, you know, and then it kind of forks into two categories, right? One is if it's a DTC only wine, you just want to make sure that you have enough information to pick so that we are, okay, this is a female winemaker. It's a hundred cases. They make uh, biodynamic, regenerative, you know, uh, you, there's a million ways to help us understand what's special about that wine to help organize them mm-hmm. to make the world smaller, right? From a DTC perspective, this is only available at the winery. That's a great one, right? You know, because mm-hmm. we could feature that as wines only available at wineries in St. Helena, like using that example, right? Or Rutherford. Um, the other way though, is really interesting. As you know, Agencies like yourself are not able to do effective marketing to drive in market sales. Like where, when you do a Facebook ad, can you stimulate a retailer? Mm-hmm. You can't because you can't send it directly to one retailer because it's illegal because of tight house laws. Mm-hmm. You can send it to picks and we'll get it to that retailer. I promise you. When our job is to make sure we're stocking that wine and making sure we have enough retailers across the country for the wines that you represent as an agency. So let's say you came in, let's call it Paul's wine or you, you were representing me. You would go to picks and you're like, Hey Paul, I'm representing Paul's Winery. <laughs> so two Pauls in that way. <laughs> I'm representing Paul's Winery. Can you make sure that we have enough coverage where they're in the markets so that we at least have a retailer in every state or a retail in every metro major metropolitan or 10 retailers in the state? Mm-hmm. Make sure that they are properly filled out merchandise because we're going to go buy ads or even put an ad on their website saying, "Avail, go find these wines at picks.wine. And because I'm never in the middle of the transaction, I'm the ultimate helper. I'm not an extra layer. I'm a, I'm a, an optimizer. It's really a special place to be in the world. That's interesting. So like a, con, like a conduit type thing. Yeah. So yeah, like go to FetzerWine.com right now. If you go to Fetzer Wine and try to buy the Chardonnay on FetzerWine.com, <laughs> they'll give you this retail locator that's clumsy and not helpful. Imagine how elegant it would be is if you sent it to Pix.Wine um, that says, here's the nearest, here's the fastest, here's the producer, and here's the sure. shortest price, right? And we have hundreds of retailers in there to help them find that wine. So that would be on a, like a, a three tier helping wineries within yeah. the three tier system, promote themselves. Yeah. I was talking to Ben Salisbury, Salisbury oh, yeah. creative about um, kind of working with, through the three tier system. And we, we were talking about picks the other week. Yeah. So ben, ben knows us very well for that. Cause we are really tightly organized around helping stimulate market sales in a way. And even, even working with the agency, you can say, we're spending this money online and they can go to the retailer and say, look at the money we're spending online, try to drive traffic to you. Mm-hmm. Keep our shelf stock, keep us on the shelf because we are working hard to help stimulate sales. And it hasn't been possible prior to picks. Okay. Yeah. Where else could you send the traffic to? There was no one else except for maybe Wine Searcher, but no one else. And even then, the problem with that is if you send a Wine Searcher, there's a paywall. You have to be a subscriber to see all the offers. Free for the consumer, free for the wine seller. And that's what makes us special. 
Perfect. What about a a, comp- a, a smaller winery that just mm-hmm. wants to sell direct to consumer? Yeah, like I said, it may not be even involved in the three tier system. So first of all, getting them linked to picks. So Trois Noirs is a great example. It's, or Meteor Vineyards, right? They're mostly DTC. Or my wife and Donna, one hundred percent DTC. Mm-hmm. Making sure that we're integrated with them, and we're integrated with almost every major e commerce platform, and making sure that the content's filled out, making sure you're telling a story so that we can rotate on our homepage and in the different search engines, those collections are all over the site. So if you go to the New Zealand search engine result page right now, there's like um, cool climate Syrahs from New Zealand. There's, um, you know, the other Pinot Gris, you know, look, you know, we, we help to slice the region up, even Rutherford, right? There's so many wines in Rutherford. How do you make it small? You know, great wines over hundred points, cool wines you've never heard of, over oaked, under oaked, I'm, I'm making up, but you get the, there's a spectrum Mm-hmm. And our job is to help the consumer. That's my number one job is to help guide them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's how you help a small one. Make sure they're integrated with picks. It's free for them to list. And then so, we're filling out, I mean, I've not done it this yet, but we're filling it out just like a social profile on Facebook. Like make sure easier. the bio's in there and make sure they're... Even easier. Yeah. You can do that. You can add that. You can enhance it. That's free to do. But for their, for their site, you just say e-commerce platform allow picks to integrate with them or give them a Google shopping fee, which is the lowest way. Google shopping feed is the international standard. If you can make a Google shopping fee, you can be on picks. Sure. And then just making a, sure it's all filled out. That's right. We talked about enhancing and back in July when we, it was still in the pre-beta mm-hmm. big ideas phase, you had talked about almost like an ad model, like a Google ad model where you could pay, where producers and wineries could pay to have their yeah. wines elevated or featured. Yeah, that- so it'll be like a Google ad model. That's not going to be out for another 18 months to be really okay. Honest with you. It's, just, it's a ways away. It's a big model. That contextual targeted marketing where you're saying, um, boost my wine up, boost my offer up. So it shows to the front of the line, you know, like a fast pass is the way I've described it mm-hmm. uh, for wineries to kind of understand. Um, uh, you know, that that revenue, that being said, that we do already generate revenue. We will be cash flow neutral in the next 60 days, which is great for a brand new startup. And the way we do it is, we are the endless shelf. Uh-huh. We are the world's largest wine shelf. And we're the only world's largest wine shelf that allows merchandising to happen. We are organizing and, and our job is to help a brand find its place on that shelf in multiple ways, whether it's the end stack, the cold boxes, make sure it has neckers on it, shelf talkers, mm-hmm. you know, so that it can be discovered because discovery is our lens. You know, um, and as you know, if you go into a wine store today, there's you know, Napa, there's Bordeaux, there's you know, Rioja, and there's imports. Mm-hmm. nobody wants to be in the import section. <laughs> Ain't nobody want to be in the import section, as they say. So our job is to make sure that you're not. So merchandising regions, uh-huh. merchandising wineries, making sure that they're properly stocked and we have a retailer in every state that's mm-hmm. able to ship there that's stocking it, right? Um, so that that dynamic merchandising engine is how we make our money. Um, how is that? I, I guess I'm not understanding that. that so it's, that's where your revenue comes, where um, retailers can pay you to help them merchandise their product on there? It's wineries that pay us to merchandise the product, right? Organize them, make sure they're stocked on the shelf. So if you, if you use a metaphor that's outside of wine and you look at New Jersey, you pay New Jersey merchandisers to go in the store every day because the consumers that went through, they make sure the shelf is organized, make sure it's stocked, make sure there's neckers on every one of the bottles, mm-hmm. make sure they cut the end stacks and the, the boxes there. Mm-hmm. Uh, make sure the coal box is full of the Chardonnay because, you know, you got to make sure that it's got enough Chardonnay for a consumer to buy cold, mm-hmm. right? Think of it like that. That's the metaphor that you can use. Uh, we're just doing it in a digital format. Oh, that's great. Is there any way that um, agencies can help you with this merchandise? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm happy to talk with you about it a lot. Ton. I'm happy to show it to you. It's very cool. Um, and, it, and, and really, it's tied to all I'm trying to do is make it easier for the consumer to discover those wines. Mm-hmm. Um, and make sure that they're in the right place in the store. And the good news is the same bottle of wine can be a hundred places in a digital store, unlike a physical store. Yes. Right? That's a, that, that's a big point. That's a, it, it takes a minute to get your mind around that where mm-hmm. you're, you're the same wine is show, you have a different experience based on your, your journey through picks and that's that right. wine can pop up at the, and what I'm thinking, I guess I'm tweeting it, is the wine has a dog on it. It might show up on the top 10 dog wine list. Um, top Tom wines with a dog label, but also one of the top wines that um, from South Africa. Absolutely. Absolutely. Going Same back to wine. South Africa, that um, yeah. Mulder Bosch faithful yeah. hound what used to be, still is one of my favorite Cabernets. And these have a great picture of a dog on the bottle. And I don't know why they took the dog off. 
Yeah, a great example of that. That's that's the perfect example. That wine could be in those places. It could be great wines from South Africa. It could be iconic Chenin Blancs. It could be wines with dogs on the label, right? There's it could be all three of those places simultaneously, which is we don't have that limitation because there's no physical place. I mean, even though I'm sitting in a physical office, uh, the, the ultimate wine store has no physical. Mm-hmm. It's cool. It's very, it's very exciting too, because what you're doing by doing so is you're giving the opportunity for a consumer to bump into that wine in multiple places, depending on where they started or where they're looking, right? If I'm interested in South Africa and I bumped into that place, oh, I might not have found or discovered that wine. Again, mm-hmm. discoveries the lens. If I'm into dogs so much, or I know I have a friend who's like just a super dog fiend and I want to buy him a birthday present and I'm in the dog section, I bump into it there through that customer journey or I'm looking for a discounted Chenin Blanc or Chenin Blanc. Those are all appropriate places then. It's super helpful. It's hard to be found in an ocean of wine. Mm-hmm. Our job's making it easier to be found in an ocean of wine. That's fantastic. So you're 90 days in. What, what are yeah. some statistics looking like? What, what are the results that you guys see now that's yeah. out in the wild? So we're delivering about $11 million of search GMV, gross merchandise value per week. Uh, with a 1% conversion ratio. That's with no traffic, with no advertising, with no, you know, with no advertising, I mean, no marketing. We're just organically growing. So $11 million a week right now. Um, and that's growing every week. So I'm, I'm super pleased with that. Part. Um, and this is going to get better over time. We're growing, like I said, by 50 retailers a week uh, uh, and about you know, 10 to 50,000 uh, products per day. So mm-hmm. it's just crazy. The matching engine is improving all the time. We're, we're churning out about anywhere from three to 25 collections a week. And those are showing up all over the site. So like I said, if you go to New Zealand, the search engine result page, there's three collections there to say, oh, I'm trying to discover New Zealand a little differently. And I didn't know they made Syrah in New Zealand, right? That's, that's helpful because New Zealand is only known for serving a walk. If we can help a consumer who's there going, huh, I'd like to discover some New Zealand Syrah. We've done our job. Fantastic. And you just, in back it up a little bit, you just integrated with um, Wine Advocate. Yes, it was a great partnership. I'm so thankful for them being such an innovative leader in the space. Um, you know, we, as you know, one of the hardest things to do is close the loop. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you get a great score, where can the Wine Advocate point to? Now, if they point to a single retailer, as you know, that retailer runs out of that wine pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, it, they, they, they could point to the, the producer as you know, the producer doesn't ship everywhere or sometimes it, and they run out of the wine fairly quickly as well, especially if it gets a great score from the wine advocate, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, we're this perpetual place. It's always filling up where as long as that inventory lives in the world and as long as retailers are selling it, it continues to show up. And if even if it doesn't, they can say, let remind me or let me know when this product shows up. And as soon as we find it in the system, we're like, hey, guys. We found that unicorn wine you're looking for, or that you know, 95 point whatever, or the birth year of your child, or what, you know, all these cool things that consumers care about, or you know, and that's going to keep growing in functionality for us. But yes, that's the beginning of many more partnerships with that because we are special in the sense that we are one of only two companies in the world and only one that has both discovery and is free to get into, free to list, free to participate. We're the only one that does that. Um, and we'll keep empowering as many people. If you're a blogger, if you, and I, I know you guys hire influencers, mm-hmm. right? Where do they point to? They can mm-hmm. DTC. Yes, they can point to the wine, but if it's more than DTC, yeah, we're that perfect tool to help close the loop. Yeah, so cl- close the loop with the influencers, close the loop with the reviewers. Get that integration. Talk to me about some of these like e-commerce systems like Commerce Seven, Vine Spring. Well, they just bought them, but um, <laughs> the <laughs> same, they're the same. <laughs> Uh, yeah so look i i'm i'm a big believer in dtc i think it's important for the market i think that i think dtc sales uh if there's a wine that's in three tier empower three tier success Mm -hmm. right the profit that's taken from dtc is often spent to stimulate market value Mm -hmm. right so it's a good thing i think dtc is healthy for the market it's a, a and so we've always had DTC as a core component of who we are. I even think the DTC in our pricing matrix, so we list the producer first always, mm-hmm. reinforces below the retailer saying, oh yeah, they're the highest SRP, it's $56. This one's $49.95, I should buy it from that retail. So it reinforces mm-hmm. retail purchasing as well when it's listed in that piece. 
So we've been a, a big fan of integrating with almost every major e-commerce platform. Um, some of them we have really bespoke deep integrations with. Commerce 7 is an example of that. Figure is another, or Offset. Um, even Vino Shipper, we have a good integration with. Others we empower through Google Shopping Feeds uh, okay. or third party. So I think the only systems we're not integrated with is Wine Direct because they, they can't spell API. And um, sorry, did I say that out loud? It did. My inner monologue comes out. Um, and um, AMS, who also can't spell API, you know, those three letters are elusive to them. Um, that's good. Sorry. <laughs> you got you got to call it where it is. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Go forward. But like some of the ones that do have a deep API, like taking Commerce 7, for example, yeah, how does yeah. a winery um, use Commerce 7 just to help get onto the yeah, the good news is if you're on Commerce 7, you're on Pix automatically. Mm. That's how tight the relationship is with Commerce 7 is that once you're on Commerce 7, the minute the product is live on your site, it's live on our site and it's, it gets top listing uh, at the part. And we do that intentionally because we could go scrape the site anyways. We mm -hmm. want to, and why wouldn't you want to be on a site where you get top billing and free listing sure. of qualified email? So, you know, I, I applaud Commerce 7. Um, because they were the leaders in saying, look, how do we make it easier for our wines, the wineries on our system to sell, you know, and they did that in a, what, an amazing way through that partnership. Oh, that's fantastic. I guess I, I didn't even realize it was automatic. It's just something yeah. that something that happens. And they're I think the a lot of wines that are automatic. May not, may not as well. Yeah, they're the only one. Well, they, they do when they go on picks because they see themselves top billing. So like, they're the only ones there? that are auto magic, as I like to say. They're our auto magic partner. So well, that's perfect. That's yeah. perfect. And then other ones you just work with the work yeah one by one. They say yes. They turn us on. It's kind of a one by one. So if you if you call Figure today, they'll turn us on. If you call Vino Shipper, they'll turn us on. If you call mm -hmm. Shopify, they'll turn us on. Um, but if you're automatically on, once you do once you choose Commerce Seven, the minute you go live, you're automatically on picks and top billing, and you get free sales whenever we send free traffic to you. Free, free, free. It's oh, amazing. that's fantastic. And then can the winers log in and then see the statistics on what's happening in? So we're building the stats in. That's something that we're working on right now. In That's fact, we're presenting wondering. statistics to everybody. We still have the free, the analytics tools that we have are free forever. Mm -hmm. uh, the ones that where we came from, um, but we're adding in the pick statistics. And that's why we kept Emetry with us as part of the uh, kind of origin story of who we are. We've changed this to picks analytics and that's free. And we'll start weaving in things like how many clicks have you seen? Um, you know, how many, you know, what is your average SRP suggested retail price across all the retails in the United States? Um, you know, what's your comp set doing? Uh, you know, really cool, you know, amazing. What is the heat map of the United States? Where are people clicking on you and buying from you? Where are you getting scanned at? You know, all of that and controlling your own content through us where you can go fill it out and change it on the fly automatically. Okay. And, and that's coming. Okay. Is, yeah, is that that's coming? coming. Yeah, okay. It's coming. But if you email us, we'll change it. Unlike everyone else, we, we're right there. We have a queue. We want to make sure that and we're listening. If you don't like it, we're going to change it. But for right for right now, so you're for, I'm a winery and I'm on Commerce Seven. I don't have huge access to analytics. I've got Google right. Analytics. Right. I'm going to be able for with an agency see the incoming traffic and know what sales have come via the Pix platform. Is there a better way for a winery to track their the Pix directed referrals? No, I think Google Analytics right now is the key way. Um, but that being said, it won't be long till we have a very special one just for them. So, yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. So, Paul, what, what, what's next? Yeah, well, next is geo-awareness. That comes next. We'll launch the mobile app in the fall. Um, I, I'm excited about our mobile experience. It's very different than everything else. You know, obviously, you know, um, you're going to see way more content partnerships through third parties like the Wine Advocate, but also different than just reviewers and critics, you know, writers and, and publications and influencers and bloggers. Our expert series has already started, but we haven't announced it. So our first two experts, we believe that every region has an expert that has spent their life studying that wine. And we want to use them as guideposts to help consumers find their way. So our first two experts were Lisa Peretti Brown for Napa and Peter Lean for Champagne. Okay. But we're talking to every major expert in the world, um, you know, and I'm, I'm asking every one of them to pay them, to hire them, to say, help the consumer understand Jura. Help the under consumer understand the Canary Islands. Help the consumer under understand orange wine or Bordeaux Blanc or, or uh, you know, old vine Zinfandel. And there's an expert for every one of those things. Mm -hmm. And we'll use them. And every month we'll have another expert come in and, you know, help us 
create those signposts for the consumer to say, what is the typicity of, of Oakville Cabernet? That's a cool story, right? They're like, you know, these are Oakville Cabernets that represent Oakville. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the, the flavor, the varietal, the, the you know, it's, it's fascinating and it's fun. Yes, your, your dream team's expanding exponentially. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's fantastic. Gosh, Paul, this has been fantastic. Where, um, I, people know where to find you, but let, 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 let the viewers know where they can find you. Yeah, I'm always, I'm super easy. It's, it's Paul at picks.wine. Uh, you know, uh, it's easy first name. And then I, at P Mabray is my social handle, P M A B R A Y. Across everything, it's been that way since the day it dawned. Super active on Twitter. And yes, I am. Yeah. Today, we just found out Elon's buying Twitter. <laughs> trying to. Did he buy it? Right. No, he's trying. He offered $54 yeah. this year. This will be dated content very quickly. Yes. Who knows what happens? <laughs> exactly. I hope he doesn't buy it, uh, but we'll see. We, we will we will mark it on here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Paul, thank you so much for joining us today. This I love the journey, and I love to see how we can help um, all of our wineries. Get the I'd most love to help with you. Let's, let's do it. Let's talk about it. Let's make it happen. Let's, let's do some magic. We'll do some experiments. It's a great experiment. It's a big, giant ball of clay for us to go try because no one knows the answer. Let's go find it out together. That's my thing. Let's go find out the answer. Love it. I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Legends Behind the Craft podcast. We'll see you again next time and be sure to click subscribe to get future episodes.